secret saints in God's army. You can't be a secret saint. You're not a secret service agent in God's army. He says, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. But if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. Notice, he said, if you confess me before men, not if you just confess to yourself, not if you try to keep it secret, but if you confess before men... He'll confess you before the Father. It has to be an open, public confession of your faith in Jesus Christ. If you've never done that, i got news for you. You've never been saved. <laughs> or, or else the Bible's a lie. And I'm not going to believe, I'm not going to begin believing now, after nearly 50 years of ministry, that the Bible's a lie. I've staked my life and ministry and my eternity on the fact that the Bible's true. Amen. And if the Bible's true, you have to confess with your mouth. You have to confess publicly that Jesus is Lord. That's what baptism's all about, folks. That's why we ask people to be publicly baptized. Why? It's your first opportunity to give public testimony of people that you're walking through the baptismal waters because you've died to an old life of sin. You're being buried with Christ in baptism and walking in a brand new life in Jesus Christ. That's what baptism is all about. It's not to wash away your sins. Listen to me, friend. Water has never washed away one single sin. The only thing that can wash away sins is the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm glad that we have a music director, associate pastor that believes in singing about the blood. Amen. And I'm going to preach the blood until God takes away any breath I have to preach. I'll never quit preaching the blood of Christ. Why? Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, you can't be forgiven. The only path for forgiveness is the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary plus nothing minus nothing that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart with the heart not the head with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation confess it with your mouth Every time somebody has come down the aisle in any church I ever had the privilege to pastor and they come down the aisle desiring to be saved and desiring to know Jesus. When we kneel in the altar, I ask them to say out loud, thank you, Jesus, for forgiving my sin. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because they need to confess with their mouth that Jesus has become their Lord and their Savior. So you've reached the point where, you, where you've told them everything you know to tell them about how to be saved. And they might still say, but, but how do I know? How do I know I'm believing? How do I know that, that I'm going to be saved? So just drop down a couple of verses to Romans 10, 13. And here's the kicker. Romans 10, 13. Look at it. Mark it. For whosoever. And ask the person, are you a whosoever? How many whosoever's do we have in the church today? Listen, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Ask the person, will you call on the name of the Lord right now? Will you ask Jesus to come into your life and change you for time and eternity? Will you declare that Jesus is your Lord right here, right now? And if they say yes, guess what? You got to be there when God saved a person for all of time and eternity. And that's one of the greatest experiences in the world, friend. How many of you have God ever used to be there and pray with somebody or saw somebody come to know Jesus because of your testimony or because of your leading them to Christ? It's one of the greatest experiences in the world. Every Christian ought to have a desire to have that experience in their life. 
Help somebody to find their way to heaven. Help somebody to be saved. So how can I do that? Walk with them down the Roman road to salvation. Mark those verses. Memorize those verses. Take a person down the Roman road to salvation. And if they call on the name of Jesus and get saved, you've got a crown in heaven waiting for you, a crown of, the, of, the, of a witness, the crown of a soul winner. I'll tell you what, there's be crowns in heaven for people that lead people to Jesus. I believe more than we loudmouth preachers that stand in the pulpit week after week. There will be prayer warriors that have prayed more people into heaven than some of us have been able to preach into heaven. That will have a great place in the kingdom of God. More so than we that get up and spout off all the time. Help somebody come to know Jesus. Believe me, God will reward you for that. There will be rewards waiting for you in heaven if you help somebody come to know the Lord. Let's quit making excuses about talking to people about Jesus. And go ahead and tell them what they need to know so that they might miss hell and make heaven. Amen? Amen. How many of you have people that you don't want to see go to hell? <laughs> then help them, help them go to heaven. Amen? Help them. Lead them down the Roman road to salvation and, and watch them come to know Jesus. And that will be a thrill that you'll never get over in this life. Amen? If you want to commit yourself to do that this morning, you can do it right where you sit, right where you stand. You can make a commitment or you can walk down this aisle and make a public commitment and say, I'm going to commit myself to see people come to Jesus. I want to be a soul winner for the Lord. Whatever you need to do, you do it right now while we stand. While we sing our invitation hymn.